Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to be joining this webinar on COVID-19 and the impact on international dispute resolution organized by UNCITRAL in partnership with the Vienna International Arbitral Center. Um, I'm grateful for the organizing organizations to have invited me to participate in this panel in the first place and to allow me to participate with this recorded video. Uh, when we first discussed my participation, it wasn't planned that I was going to participate by video. Unfortunately, things, um, unfortunate events um, uh, are not making it possible for me to be there with you on the day. However, we couldn't have actually planned it um, any better because the fact that I am recording this message to you by video is actually a very good illustration of what I am going to talk about. And that is whether or not in international arbitration any form of asynchronous participation might be a possibility in the future. What do I mean by asynchronous participation? You are all together um, in a webinar uh, participating remotely in front of your computer screens, but you're doing this at the same time in a synchronous fashion. I have recorded this video on a different day at a different time. It is actually evening here and quite late. I am enjoying a glass of wine, I have to admit. So this is done remotely as well, but in a asynchronous fashion. In international arbitration, actually, a lot of the procedural steps that we already do, um, we do them in an asynchronous fashion. For instance, the exchange of written uh, submissions is done asynchronously. One party uh, provides a statement of case and then the other party later um, replies with a statement of defense. However, the oral hearing is typically be understood as a synchronous exchange of arguments and evidence where everyone is together either in person or potentially remotely um, due to COVID-19 or otherwise. Now, would it be possible to consider that in international arbitration some forms of participation should be done um, asynchronously? For instance, could you consider that the council, the parties' council, record their opening statements by video and send it to the arbitral tribunal so that the members of the arbitral tribunal can watch the opening statements whenever they want and as often as they want. The arbitral members could also then um, deliberate and discuss um, some of the questions that has raised, go back to the written submissions, check something, um, and prepare for the evidentiary hearing, the hearing of witnesses and experts that arguably could be still done in a synchronous fashion. Now, I admit this hypothesis I'm putting to you is somewhat provocative and many of you will be skeptical and rightly so. But let's try to assess together what the potential advantages and disadvantages could be um, for a asynchronous participation. One of the obvious advantages, of course, is timetabling and availability. Um, it is much easier, if not uh, very easy, um, to find the time to record or watch um, these uh, types of participation and messages. Um, and we all know I'm currently, just as we speak, trying to find um, alternative hearing dates in a case um, where a citizen arbitrator, where the hearing had to be postponed, not even for COVID-19, um, and it proves to be extremely difficult to secure alternative hearing dates that are suitable for both parties as well as the co-arbitrators. Another advantage is the fact that you can watch and re-watch um, certain passages um, of the opening statement um, and potentially go back and check some of the written submissions. Um, and so one could say this actually allows you to further a better understanding of the case than in a traditional synchronous hearing. 
And last but not least, time zone issues. Um, many of you will in recent weeks have participated in remote hearings with participants from around the globe from different time zones. And it's always an issue to find the right time slot. So you, even have to you either have to reduce the hearing days or some participants need to accept to connect to the hearing either early in the morning or late um, in the day. And again, this is something that would just go away with any form of asynchronous participation. Now, I'll stop here regarding potential advantages. I'm sure there are others that we can think of um, because I also want to turn to some of the potential downsides. Um, of course, one of the downsides is that if you watch a video, you cannot um, interrupt someone and ask questions uh, of clarification or otherwise. Second, live performances are typically much more lively than recorded ones, and I'm, I'm sorry about that. Um, when I discussed the issue about of asynchronous participations and hearings at a recent LCA conference, uh, one of the participants half jokingly said, oh, that reminds me um, of these online training courses I'm supposed to do, but always forget. Um, now, of course, uh, online training courses may be something that you can sort of push down the road, the can, push the can down the road, but the participation of a hearing is obviously a more uh, serious matter. Third, and maybe most importantly, in my view, any form of asynchronous participation reduces human interaction. And in particular, random human interaction, the sort of, you know, uh, random meeting at the coffee machine, just a smile um, and a couple of, you know, courteous words sometimes is something that eases the situation and the atmosphere in the hearing room more than anything else. Now, of course, we could a lot more could be said about this um, hypothesis I've I've just outlined and and discussed with you, but uh, I'm mindful of time, and so I would like to just give you a, a couple of concluding remarks. If you find the idea I've outlined to you here um, provocative, then I suggest that you read um, the book Richard Suskin's book, which is online uh, courts and the future of justice, where he suggests for international court litigation to entirely do away, entirely do away with any form of synchronous um, hearing and that everything should be done in an asynchronous fashion. Now, I have to admit, for my perspective, that is going a step too far, in particular for the types of disputes, um, complex disputes that we deal about, um, uh, that we have to deal with in international arbitration. But going back to the question of this panel, how international dispute resolution will evolve in light of COVID-19, I think we all need to be flexible. We all need to be open-minded. We all need to think outside the box. And so considering how and whether potentially any form of asynchronous participation might be possible is something that I think is worth um, uh, taking seriously. So I'll stop here. I thank again everyone for uh, participating, allowing me to participate in an asynchronous fashion um, in the webinar. Um, I wish you a wonderful continuation um, of the event. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to email me. Um, but with that, I'll hand over back to the moderator and wish you an excellent continuation of the webinar. Thank you.